Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade tutorial. Haven't done one in a little while. I'm actually up over 250 subscribers, but as of a couple days ago, YouTube is no longer going to pay me until I get up to 1,000. So, eh, whatever. It wasn't like they were paying me a whole lot, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. So I thought today I would talk about um, and show how to do some like kind of glow effects and some things you can do with gradients and just to make something look really shiny, metallic-y, maybe almost neon-y, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and jump in and, and get started. All right. So I've made a, a file here, just uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels wide here. And uh, I'm in RGB mode because I think a lot of times the colors are just going to be more vibrant um, when you do it that way. Um, so I'll just go ahead and create a black background because we're going to do something that glows and is shiny and so we'll want to have it uh, uh, kind of look light up against the dark background, you know, have that nice contrast. I'm going to go ahead and use my text tool and type. I'm using Monoton. Uh, I think that would look really good for this particular application. So there's glow. Let's just do it in white so we can see it real quickly. Um, looks about right, maybe about that big or so. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and convert this to outlines. You can hit Control Shift O, um, or I believe you go up to Object, Expand will work, that kind of thing. But Control Shift O is the hotkey. Um, I use it all the time. Uh, get used to using it. Just it'll make your life easier. Um, I'll go ahead and align this to the artboard. I'm under my align tool. Align to artboard and we'll vertically and horizontally center it. That looks good. I think I want to go with a pink color. So maybe something, maybe a little warm pink. I don't know, something along those lines. Somewhere in there. That looks pretty cool. And let's just make a gradient. Um, let's do, we'll do a white color for like the hottest pot spots of the gradient. Maybe just a little bit of pink in there. Um, let's see, I'm gonna choose like a really light, hot pink. Yeah, okay, so something, Something like that, you know, play with it, get it to where you want it, but like, that looks pretty good. You know, just to have some highs and lows. And then maybe, hmm, maybe I'll do a radial on some of this. Let's see, and maybe, maybe if we ungroup, we come in here. So there's this one. Let's pull, okay. So what I'm going to do is, I ungrouped everything so that I could make the gradient that I've applied, this radial gradient, I can set it up differently for each one of these, okay? So if I come into this one and I select this letter G and then go over here to my gradient tool or press G, um, it's gonna pull up this slider. So as you can see, there's the dark, here's the lightest, here's the dark. Well, you don't see that at first dark level because it starts here and then radiates to there. Well. The G doesn't really have any content until about here anyway. So what I would do is pull this out to maybe there and then maybe pull this to halfway. And maybe just a little bit more extension there. Maybe I'll pull this in just a little bit more. Really make that a, a harder line so that it's, you know, something like this. And maybe for the G, we don't like that. Maybe you'd prefer to just say, well, let's do a radial instead. Maybe so you just do that. It's kind of fine. Whatever you want to do, just play around with it. I'll just go with a radial for now. You could go in and make this radial, and then you could come in and turn this into its own shape and make this uh, linear. But, you know, I don't want to do that for the purposes of this tutorial. We'll just kind of make it simple for now. All right, I kind of like the look of that. That looks cool. Maybe do this. So all I'm doing right now is I'm copying the styling I did to this gradient. So as, as you can see, 
here's where the dark is, here's where the light is, here's where the dark is. And when I click on this and then grab my eyedropper tool, it's going to simulate that exact same setup, see? So that there's solid dark all the way to here, and then it gradiates over to um, this lighter pink and then this darker pink again. So let's just apply that to all of these and see how it looks. All right, so I grab my eyedropper tool, click on it, yep. And then if you want to just apply, you can always hit Alt and click, and it will just apply whatever you just did. Now, I don't know if I like the way that one looks. Let me see if, yeah, let's change that up a little bit. I would move this more to the center and probably pull it out a little bit. Yeah, so that you're looking more like that. So that's kind of cool. But again, if you wanted to go through here and actually make this linear for this section, linear for that section, linear here, linear there, you could do that. You just have to create these as separate shapes or go in and do a, ma a, a gradient mesh, um, which can get a little tricky sometimes. So anyway, for the purposes of this, just doing a simple gradient with a radial thing just to try and throw in some variety. Um, I think it works fine. And again, it's quick, it's easy. I'm all about quick and easy. So the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it to the front. Let's do the back actually. Paste it to the back. And if I move to the left or right, you'll see it's behind that black. So all I did was shift and left arrow to move it. And then I'm going to hit control and right bracket to bring it up one. So now I know that it's above this black, but it's behind my original. And so that you can see that more clearly, I'm going to make it yellow. See, you can see that it's underneath my original uh, glow. Let me back up one step, just control Z to back up. And I'm going to shift it back over, shift right arrow to make it right in line with the one that's in front. Object, path, offset path. And you're going to do 10 is too much. Let's come back to about 3. 3 looks okay. We'll do that. So now I've expanded that to being further out, right? The original is, if you can see it, if I hover over, you can see where the original is, this blue line. And this is the expanded um, uh, glow behind it that I'm going to change the... Um, fill to here, we're going to do linear, and I shouldn't have a stroke on there, I'm going to get rid of that. Um, so now it's linear, but I kind of want it to be different. I'm going to do a little bit different of a, of a layout for that, and I'm going to go, I don't know if left to right is the best, let's try up to down and just see what that looks like. Okay, so that's kind of cool because then the center parts are a little hotter and the outsides are darker so they're a little cooler it just adds a little extra element to this letter um, so what the other thing i'm going to do is grab let's see let's just grab all of it so i'm grabbing everything minus the background which if you want to you can just do control um, two and that will lock that or you can put it in its own layer under layers and lock the layer like this you wanted to do a new layer and then just lock it you could do that as well um, when I'm only dealing with a few elements I don't care about layers like that slows me down so um, I would just lock it here and if you ever want to unlock it you can just control alt and two and it unlocks everything now if you're working with multiple layers locking and unlocking multiple things um, in the same layer is time consuming so I, I would recommend using layers if you've got a lot of pieces but for this nah. all right so I'm gonna copy everything I'm gonna go ahead and paste to the front which is control F and then I'm gonna group it all together so Pathfinder and just click this first one which is unite and it will group everything together for me just like that all right cool I want to make this all the same color so I'm just gonna grab it's currently this um, gradient. I'm just going to grab that dark pink and click on it and then click this last color to set it as the full color here. So then I want to do like an effect maybe let's try a Gaussian blur and see what that does. 
10 pixels preview, see what that looks like. Um, that's, a, that's something. I don't know if that's enough. 20, 30, we're starting to get somewhere. I think 30 looks pretty good. Now, I still want to see what's behind this in the gradients that I just did. So I'm, I've got it selected, and I'm going to hit Control, left bracket, back, 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 and I'll probably need to do that four more times or just once. An easier way to do it might be just to hit control shift left bracket, sends it all the way to the back, and then take shift off and just do control right bracket, which brings it up one. And so you know it's behind this when you hit control shift left bracket. It's all the way behind the black background. And if you hit just one more ahead by hitting control right bracket, you know that it's in front of the black because this is our uh, backmost layer, right? Or again, you could do it in layer palette, whatever's easiest for you. So I just added a little bit of a glow. So cool thing is you've got the glow kind of natural from the, the gradient effects and you could change those up as much as you want. You get a little extra glow from like the, the beveling effects, kind of make them look like they're raised, maybe sort of like a, um, a stove top, you know? And then I've got the glow effect in the Gaussian blur. The other thing I would do is probably just add a gradient to this. Um, I want to go ahead and have this pink. So here I am. Let me walk you through this. I'm just using the um, direct selection tool here, A, to, to select a gradient, which has that dark, darker pink. I want to go ahead and grab this and make a swatch out of it. So just grab and, and uh, oh, I need to go to swatches. Here we go. Um, and drop it in. So there it is. There's my pink. Now I'm grabbing my black here again. And I'm going to create a uh, radial gradient with that. Well, nice thing is it already had that pink in there for me because it was using the last gradient I already did. But if it didn't, you just grab and, and put that wherever you need to. And then I just want to do the reverse of this. I want black on the outside, pink on the inside. So we'll do reverse. And then for this, I think you're going to want to add a bit of uh, black to it. Make it a darker pink, you know, something, something along those lines. Um, and then maybe the other thing I would probably do is take this select this background, hit your gradient tool, bring up the sliders. If you click on this button right here, this little cursor that changes, you can change the shape of the gradient so that it's more ovular, which is really going to you know, suit the, the text better. So it's only glowing in this section instead of in a huge circle like it was. So that's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, you can play with this, get all sorts of different looks um, doing this exact same tactics I just did. Like, you don't have to follow my exact example. I mean, just a cool thing is once you've got it in here, you can change things up. So I'm grabbing the, the topmost layer here, and I could go in and, and change these gradients to uh, be linear. And maybe I have the, the linear gradient go from top to bottom like that. So maybe you prefer that look, um, which isn't bad, actually. I, I think I do prefer that look over the, the radial stuff. The only reason I did radial is because of the roundness of these letters. But yeah, I, I actually kind of prefer this linear look. Um, and then you could do the same thing with the background if you wanted to do something else there. Um, but anyway, uh, if you wanted to, you could do multiple of those uh, Gaussian blurs and you could do different degrees of blur. Um, you could go in and set the opacity to different opacities. If you, if you thought that blur in the background was just too strong, you could come in and, and change it to, uh, you know, instead of 100%, maybe it's only 50%. Uh, Boom. There you go. It's not quite as severe now, but it's still there. Um, you know, play around with it. Let me know what you guys thought of that tutorial. If there are some other tutorials that you'd like to see, uh, leave those uh, comments down below. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Trying to get my way up to a thousand subscribers so that I can continue making some income off of this and, and make it worth my while and so that I can inform you guys. All right.
until the next video. See you later.